Hello everybody, this is TechCut. Welcome back to another video. In this one, what we're going to be doing is showing you how to run Linux. The method I'm going to be using is going to be with Ubuntu, but it will also work perfectly fine with Linux Mint or any other Ubuntu-based Linux distribution. And what we're going to do is run it in VirtualBox. Now what this does is it basically runs the entire operating system in its very own window. Now if you're already running Linux, you can do this almost the exact same way with Windows 10, Windows 7, with VirtualBox because this also works on Linux. So jumping right into it, we are going to want to download VirtualBox. If you already have this installed, you could go ahead and skip ahead a bit. But we're going to start downloading that. And while that does that, we're going to head over to the uh, Ubuntu page and download the latest long-term release. Now, it says right on there, but the difference between the long-term and short-term releases is the long-term ones are the ones that they dedicate full support to for a very long time and the short-term releases are kind of not necessarily betas but they're updated versions before they give full support so we are going to download the 20.04 long-term support just go ahead and download that and it will bring us here and we are going to go ahead and save the file now while it downloads that, I'm going to go ahead and install VirtualBox. This is just like any other thing you'd want to set up. Just go ahead and click Next. For this, you just want to keep it as is. Click Next, Next, and Yes. And then install it. And this should only take maybe a minute max. When these come up, this is basically asking if you want to give it permission to install various driver software so it can communicate properly with your system ports, with the internet, things of that nature. I'm going to uncheck this. You're going to want to check that, but I'm just going to go through what it's going to ask you real quick. Here's the network adapter, so it's going to install some software for that. And then this is another network service. And then we are going to start the program. Now we're going to minimize this real quick, and then this is VirtualBox. To start a new VirtualBox operating system, we're going to want to hit new. Here is where you're going to name your system. So for this one, I'm going to do Ubuntu. And I'm just going to leave it just like that. And right here, you have the type and the version. It's able to read what you're putting there. So it usually fills this in properly. But if it does not, you could go ahead. You can see all the different versions of Linux it supports by default and all the different base operating systems. Go ahead and click Next here. This is how much RAM you're going to give your system. Now, you could give it really as much as you want. Where it has the recommended, that's the minimum. A general rule of thumb is to don't give it more than half of your system memory, especially if you plan on actually doing some work, some serious work in it. But give it enough that it's as if its own computer. So I have 32 gigabytes of RAM in the system. So I'm going to go ahead and give this 8 gigabytes of RAM, which is going to be more than enough for anything I'm going to need to do on it. Click Next, and you're going to want to create a virtual hard disk, and the default version is perfectly fine. Click Next, and here you have two options. I highly recommend you go with the dynamically uh, expanding storage. What this does is it makes it the file on your computer, which will act as the virtual hard drive, only as big as the amount of files actually in it. If you pick fixed size, you're going to select like you want it to be a 100 gigabyte hard drive, for example, and it will immediately take up 100 gigabytes on your computer. As with the dynamic, it'll have a 100 gig cap, but it will only take up storage based on how much storage is actually taking up in that virtual machine. So go ahead and click next. And this is fine. You can put it in the custom place if you'd like to, but we're going to go ahead and create that. And then we're going to go over here and check up on our download because we're going to need this about a minute left. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. All right, now it's all done. So I'm going to go ahead and move this to my desktop real quick. One thing I'm going to do just for myself is I'm going to store all my ISO files in my documents, new folder, ISOs. You can do this however you want. Once you install the ISO on the virtual machine you're not really going to need it again but now I have it here and from here you could go into settings if you want to to change some things further under general you have some advanced things so basically everything you were doing when you were creating the system you could adjust from here 
you go into system, change the RAM, change the boot order. There's all kinds of things. You could dedicate more processors to the actual virtual machine. So I have an 8-core CPU, so I could dedicate up to a full 8 cores. I'll just throw that at 2. Under display, you could give it more um, dedicated video memory if you'd like to. I'm just going to leave that where it was or put it somewhere. Actually, I'll just max it out. Under storage, you can change the different storage. You can add more virtual hard drives. Audio, you can enable or disable that. Network, you can enable or disable your network adapters completely so it thinks you have no internet connection whatsoever. Uh, serial ports, USBs, shared folders, which is very fun. Actually, let's go ahead and create a shared folder. Shared folder, and we're going to go other. And let's just call this um, VM shared and I'll link that to all my other virtual machines and see see if that works out well so I'm gonna select this folder VM shared and I'm gonna auto mount the folder and just leave that as is and see what it shows up as uh, you can change the user inter interface here but I'll go over all this in a more detailed virtual box tutorial guide and we're gonna hit OK so from here you're gonna want to start up the virtual machine and then when your ISO is here, you're going to want to go ahead and click start and it should boot right into the live disk image of Ubuntu, which based on this guy and the color, I can see that it's doing. So it's going to go ahead and it's going to check the disk that you downloaded by disk. I mean that ISO because it attached as if it was one go ahead and click this out actually right here. The, um, reports that the guest OS supports mouse pointer integration basically what that is is as you can see I could go back and forth in between the virtual machine and my actual operating system without having to hit any special controls to enable or to start the interaction with the virtual machine there's certain ones that don't support that and you have to click in it and then you can control it and then you have to hit a certain key or certain hotkey to go out of it so close that out and now we're going to begin the installation of Ubuntu. We can try it just to get into the desktop real quick, but I'm actually going to install it on this machine. So you're going to want to go ahead and click install, go through this, pick all your settings. I'm going to do a normal installation and I'm going to uncheck this for now just so it's a little quicker. I'm going to hit continue. Actually, let's do this. Install third party software for graphics. Go ahead and continue. And here you're going to want to erase the entire disk and install Ubuntu, unless if you're doing something weird where you want to have like a dual boot in a virtual machine, which I wouldn't see why, but I'm going to go with the default option. So install now. It is going to write the changes to the disk, so anything in this disk will be deleted, which there is nothing, so that is more than fine. Hit continue and it should begin the installation process. It's actually running in the background, but we're going to go ahead and um, give it a name. So I'm going to call this the uh, virtual vert bun bun vert bun to verbun to that sounds good. Verbuntu virtual box password. I'll give it something simple. Boom, boom, boom. Login automatically should probably do this right. Ooh, I did this one wrong. I see what I did. Okay, and continue. And here is where it is installing everything. Now, I wonder if it supports this out of the box. It does not. Later on, you'll be able to resize the window and the resolution of the system will automatically change based on the size of the window, which is very, very nice, especially in Windows virtual boxes to be able to do that. It's absolutely awesome. So I can't really see much. I can't move the window much because my resolution is so low. So I'm going to go ahead and skip the video ahead for this to be all done. All right. And when the installation is complete, you should see this. We're going to go ahead and restart our system. It's going to shut down and then reboot. It says, please remove the installation medium and hit enter. So what we're going to do is go under devices, optical drives, and you can see that it is right there. So we're going to click on it and it should have removed it. So we're going to check that again. Oh no, it's not. So the check, so it was already removed. So it automatically removed itself when it rebooted. So ignore everything I just said. We're going to uncheck that. 
We're going to do a force unmount. You could do that if you want to make sure that it's unmounted. And then we're going to go ahead and hit enter. And then it's going to go ahead and reboot. And that is the Ubuntu loading screen. So I'm going to close this out again. The little icon that was right next to that little X I just hit was to stop that from coming up. I should have just hit that, but better luck next time. And boom, we are in. So I'm going to skip this for now. Um, I'm going to hit next. Help improve Ubuntu. Nah. Next. Next. And we are ready to go. So what I'm going to do real quick is go and change some of the display settings because it's still not doing the window lock thing. So we're going to change this to, let's go with a good old 720p display. This one works. Apply. Keep changes. And you can see that it is now bigger. So that is about it. You could go in and update all your drivers. You could do whatever you want to do. This is running as if it is its own computer. So that is about it. We have an updater here, so I'm going to go ahead and install that now. But that concludes this video on installing Ubuntu in our virtual machine. If this video has helped you out in any sort of way, please smash that like button. Leave a comment if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever it may be. I upload it videos similar to this one quite frequently computer tutorials overviews hardware stuff a couple minecraft things here and there so go ahead and subscribe there are some videos on the screen right now go ahead and check them out to get started with my channel have a great day and goodbye